see when we get going here and uh it's kind of it's it's interesting like i i need i will get we'll have to do this a few times you and i just so that i get really comfortable with starting things up and um yeah peacock right, has the office a show about it which i just got yeah peacock ad yeah why is that <clears throat> i don't know you shouldn't have okay All right, man. Stream share is off, and I'm waiting for my guest to come on, and then we'll rock and roll. Cool. You want me to chill out? Yeah, you can. You can uh, just watch and, and send me a send me a text on my phone if if I need to do anything. Cool. You know. Okay. All right, dude. Have a good conversation. All right. Sounds good. See ya. All right, John. Thanks. Azad is his name, and um, just waiting for him to hop on the stream, and then we will get started, learn something about each other, and then you asked some big things, actually, these two Florida, we have two Senate races. If you're not from the U.S., there's uh, two Senate races happening that's really big, and they will go toward the, look like they're going toward the Democrats, which is going to have a big impact on U.S. politics. So, um, yeah, that's kind of a, a serious thing. But anyway, um, here comes Assad now. Well, Azad, how are you? Can you? There we go. Hang on, we'll get him on. Yeah, Azad, can you hear me? No, not quite yet. Anyway, this is uh, a pretty serious shift as we go in, uh, in the U.S. political scene. A massive change from where we've been, to be honest. And uh, so um, I'm not... It's nice to get to, to see change. Change is important, regardless of what it is. Azad give, Azad, give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. I think that, that these, if these two Democrats, so if you're not from the U.S., to, let me just lay out what's happening. These two Democrats are running, uh, there are these two Senate races in Georgia in one state, and if the both Democrats win, that means the Democrats control the House, the Senate, and the presidency which in the United States, which is a major coup d'etat. And will really seriously transform the way politics is unfolding or has been unfolding uh, for the past 10 years. Because six years of the Obama administration, the Republicans controlled the Senate. And uh, so, and then, then, of course, the four years of the uh, Trump administration. So this is just a major, like, earth uh, foundation shattering transformation hey azad i think you can you hear me okay give yeah, me a thumbs I, up i can there hear you, you. what happened yes. was i was using my phone because my camera phone is in the laptop so i said let me try there and i was okay it's not, keeping, it's not working here so then i tried here it's working here but it's not working there so i don't know why yeah well it's nice seeing you. i just took to my laptop for now yeah let me bring you on actually hopefully my connection doesn't drop just hope that doesn't happen yeah and no. i can see your full face there you go. Yeah, perfect. Got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Got yeah. Okay, got it. Yeah. Hey, so uh, so tell me, tell me, how, how'd you end up reaching out to me, by the way? Yeah, different countries. So I was looking through it, reading a lot more, and then I was like, who did I find? I tried everyone, but I couldn't get the right person because everyone's either busy or they don't have time or it's just too difficult to get hold of them. 
So then one day I'm on YouTube and I'm going through the documentaries and the channels and then I come to respond back. So I sent that email months ago. I'm thinking if I get a chance, it can happen, it cannot happen. So it's a bit of a 50-50 chance. So I said, okay, give it the rest, see what happens. If you respond, then I was going to be worth it. Then when you got the respond, and then that's how I managed to find your email, your, your information. And then I had two emails and I said, okay, let me send a list and we'll see what happens. And then months down the line, you responded. I was like, okay, that's a good sign. Yeah, well, awesome, man. It's it's cool. Sometimes it, it takes me a while to get to email, you know, sometimes, especially well, in the middle of a but well, then it grows to 100, 200, 3, 4, 5, 600. And, and then I have to take a vacation, a couple of a few days, two or three days in a vacation and just beat it down until I finally get some to the bottom that I really want to respond. And I thought the best way to answer these kinds of questions for me anyway is to um i did my course in public relation corporate communication and i just recently finished it so i did that and then i said that's i was reading documentary reading things to just so were you so your parents are from from where pakistan india my, my from... mom and dad are indian background oh. is indian so i've got the asian background as well it's there but you but are you muslim or are you hindu yeah i am I am I'm Muslim. Yeah. And and so you and you, wait, did you say you were born in the UK or in no, I, India? I grew up in the UK, but I was born in uh, Kenya. In I was Kenya. Born in Kenya. Okay, got it. I'm yeah. Kenya Mombasa. So I was born there. But then I moved here to the UK since I was one, one and a half. And I yeah. just grew up in the UK. In so South. it's in, it's it is interesting that there is so many so many Indians in mm. certain countries in Africa, you know, like in Kenya in particular, right? Mm. That people don't realize that. Yeah, there is. Yeah. If you'd be surprised as well, you will be surprised. Mm -hmm. And you, okay, one other thing. Um, <laughs> you, the UK right now is in going into a serious lockdown, right? Because yeah, of COVID. Yeah, uh, right now they've just announced that they've gone into national lockdown due to this new variant. I said that the new variants cause it, it, the first the first virus that they had is that okay we can control it and then they got next this new variant which is a mutated one that's confusing them so now it's caused a situation that it's just UK in general and I'm surprised about it so now the whole of UK is a national lockdown for the next I think I'm guessing until March they're saying 19th of February but it's going to extend to March for the look of it wow so that's it's like another three months off oh man. Yeah, so I just at home half the time. So, so, so you have not been working? No, during... I haven't. All I've been doing is just reading, trying to find some free courses, and at the same time, just just do something productive. Yeah, you yeah, keep yeah. Hold with it. That's the best yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, that's intense, man. It's like it's hard to, you know, we don't realize the degree to which this the covid has such an impact on people you know so my wife and i were talking this morning about west was going to it, it's, it's since the variant it, it's since this virus has happened i was not expecting you um i was expecting you okay i need to tell you something like where's uh, what's up like just to let you know a heads up that we may shut down and i'm thinking why is it due to the virus so we may have online lectures and came back in february end of february march all the way to july it just was at home five months on the course. So at my stage in my career, that the virus doesn't have, it has an impact, obviously, mm. right? But it's different. You know, I, I'm at this, in the final years of my work, you know, my um, institutional work career, right? Mm. And But you were just getting started. So, you know, <laughs> for you... Um, you know, it's really... Well, you're extended. I thought that would have been another difficult situation, but it's 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 better. It's, it's You get used up to sometimes. Yeah. All right. Well, um, okay, so hang on one second. Yeah, sure, sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send a, a message to my to my tech guy, and then I want... And then you get ready. I want you to ask me your first question that you yeah, sure. asked me. Yeah, sure. So hang on one second.
I remember, to do. What happened is I looked at the question myself. I had to literally start, I had to sit down and think. Is okay? Was this making sense? But it was making. Sense. I just had to re reword it. So you know the way you present because what I've noticed is that the way you present and the way I've seen your videos, it, it's not no like no. It's not no not taking down. Uh, it's just you being there, listen, be part of it, and you have the module taken. How do you get your audiences to pay attention or how do you take the information which is complex and you give it to them in a way that will stick to their head, it will stick to them? Mm. So like you've got a lot of so sociology class and yeah. you want to teach your students that this is sociology, this is what I've understood. But how do you do it in a way that it's going to stick into the head that they're going to come back again and like you've learned way more than before. You've learned five times more than what we learned before in a way that you teach them. Would you? What is it that's different that you're doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that was okay. fascinating. That was the way you were doing it. I was really interested in how you did it. Yeah. Because yeah. the, the lecture the, that you did, it got stuck into my head as well. You did. It's which one? Uh, the lecture, the Asia Cool class about uh, the Asia Cool class and talk about BTS. And then there's another lecture you're talking about the views on hijabs. And then there's another one you were doing on sociology and how you found your foundation and what helped you from your wife telling from the yeah. book. Yeah, that yeah. really stuck into the way you were just going from then it just made sense and you yeah. just connected everything in it yeah. was interesting how you did it okay so so a couple a couple yeah that's a really good question so a couple things um first off most students are so i, I most students are not are most people are paying attention okay right. but there are a lot of students who are not. They just can't follow. You know, they're young. Um, their minds are elsewhere. They're not mm. thinking about, um, you know, they're, they're not seeing that they have, first off, that they're paying for a class. Mm. And they're paying for this, right, to sit in this room. Mm. And uh, and so their minds are wandering and they're elsewhere, mm. right? But um, but nonetheless, it, it is... When I first started, from the very first classes that I started teaching, students were responding in their evaluations that they were saying that they were thinking. In some ways, for the, the course helped them to think, and sometimes for the first times in their life, right? And I think, for me, that comes from the fact that I was never a very good student in my in my career and um, w growing up, I was really interested in other things. Huh. And then it it but I was always a reader. I was a, I was an avid reader. I always read books from wide ranges of things. You know, I would go to the library and I would just get eight books and I would read. But huh. I didn't take my grades very seriously. You know, I didn't care about grades. Huh. They didn't really matter to me. Mm -hmm. So I was busy doing other things. But when I first started teaching, the very first course I taught was this course on cybernetics, uh -huh. on like how the mind mirrors the computational processes of a computer. And I didn't know what cybernetics was. So I was hired to teach this class, right? And the guy said, the person who hired me said, well, you, ha you have to start in 15 minutes because the class is already meeting. And I yeah. said, okay. I, I didn't have time to even look up the word cybernetics, okay? This is a long answer to your question, but I think huh. I can zero in on it. And I walked, I walked down the hall, and I said, well, I can't pretend that I know anything about the subject matter because I don't. And I will, somebody in the class might know something about it. And I knew that I wasn't a good... I, I shouldn't be teaching the course because I had only four years before got serious in school. Like when I was 20 years old is when I took, I started taking school seriously for the first time in my life. In this class, with, I was 24. I was just about to teach, 20, turn 25. So four years, I was studying seriously four years, right? Hmm. And now I'm teaching this class on cybernetics so and human ecology. And so I walked into the classroom and I said, hey, I does anybody know what cybernetics is? Because I'm your professor and I don't know what it is. And and so everyone looked at me like they just wasted their money, right? Yeah. But there were about 70, 60 or 70 people in the classroom. And I said, but okay, don't worry about it. We'll figure this out, right? 
So from the very first day, then the very next day when I came into class, it was a class of discovery. Like I was learning as I was teaching. And as I was discovering things and I was putting things into boxes, into categories, I was speaking out loud what it was that I was discovering. Mm. And I realized that that was the way to teach, that all great teachers, all good teachers are also good learners. Mm. And so when I teach, I'm actually teach discovered that I learned when I made things really simple. And Mm. I learned that from this class because cybernetics was really complex. And in order for me to understand the simplest ways, because I feel like if I can make a simple argument, then I can explain something that's very complex. Mm-hmm. And I just do it naturally, in part because I'm also not really smart. You know, like, mm-hmm. like not, not, it's not smart. It's like my mind isn't really fast. It's mm-hmm. not really fast. It doesn't move really quickly. And so I have to make things super simple. Anyway. It makes sense because the way you, from one of your lectures, I remember watching the Asian Pro class, I was really watching it, and the the way you were presenting it, and it was keeping it very simple, but it was very catchy at the same time. It wasn't anything complex, it wasn't anything complicated, and it was really sticking to the and sticking to me. And at first I was thinking, okay, that's interesting. How did you do that? Because there's lectures I've come across, I've seen on YouTube, that have done complex, complex talks. And I would yeah. have to go back in dictionaries and find what this word means and what does this word mean and what does this mean. And then by the time you come back, you got to go back, watch the video again, make sense of it. Yeah, it's it's interesting how simplicity is the best way to do things. And you well, so it as well. Yeah. So one one idea that I have about learning is that people education is stuck in the and it has been for millennia, right? Hmm. It's stuck in the idea that students. All they need to do is memorize the ideas of their teachers, yeah. right? I mean, you know, right? you're in your own terms. Yeah. So that means you have to make analogies, you have to use metaphors, you have to do it on your own. Whatever it is, you have to do it on your own. Yeah. And so if you can't do it on your own, then you're not thinking. Yeah. So that's why in my classes, I never use other ideas from other people. I, I never draw on other thinkers, other scholars, other theories. Everything just comes from what I've discovered yeah. about the world. And then my goal is to get students to start doing it on their own. So they need to start coming up with their own theories about life, not yeah. mine, right? Because you'll never understand mine yeah. because it's only the one that I, it's the only one I have seen for really advanced people. Yeah. And in my classes, there are no, there are very few advanced people. Because, you know, I teach this big, massive course, right? So, yeah. Anyway, that's my thinking on it. So, right. the I bottom it. line is I'm talking to myself. So, it's always, <laughs> it's always being you and just being simple. That, that's the biggest thing there. Not yeah. taking it from someone else. That's an interesting one, honestly. Because most of the lectures I've had and the teachers I've experienced has only been a minority of teachers that I've come across. That yeah. really keep it simple, but they get to the point in a way that it just makes sense. Yeah, and totally. Some that I've come across that they do the lesson, you last them once, you last them again, you last them three times, but you still don't get it, and you're still starting like, okay, what I'm supposed to do now, until you get it simplified. It is true. I agree with what you're saying. It's interesting how you've done it in your career as well. It's really interesting. Yeah, it's it's kind of uh, well, you know. So I had the 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 good fortune of having a mentor who was really a brilliant thinker. And he, he was such a brilliant thinker that, I mean, you know, he wrote his first book when he was like 12 years old or something. And uh, I knew from early on, I met him when I was 20. And I knew from that time on, I would never, I could never be as smart as he is. Right. So I, I stopped trying to compete with the best um, with the best thinkers right. and and it just gave me the opportunity to just do things on my own terms and so I never had to worry about anybody else or I never had to worry about being smart right. <laughs> so yeah 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 so that was really helpful it sucks when you have to question your own intellect right. 
What would you say from Arabic teachings, for instance, when you're teaching or you're trying to influence someone, what would you say is your biggest goal sometimes? When you're teaching and uh, every time you get a new students every year, you're going to be expecting to do different things every time uh, on your own goals. What would you say is that one thing that you always try your best to make sure that this happens or this is accomplished by the end of the year when you're teaching and influencing them? I think my main goal is for people to have a simple but yet complex series of thoughts. Hmm. No, hang on, hang on. My main goal is for people to discover. Like, for example, it when I was um, at a certain age, I think when I was 23... I started reading the New York Times every day. Mm. And and I was reading about obscure things, you know, like maybe I would read an article about the conflict in Kashmir or something, you know, or about um, any anything at all, right? Traffic patterns in Mumbai or whatever, right? And reading about stuff all over the world. I didn't know anything about it, but I just kept reading the times every day. So I would spend about an hour and a half every day just reading all of the pieces of the world. And eventually it started to make sense to me. I started to be able to piece things. It's like a big puzzle, you know? I started to put things together. So, but it took me a lot of work, right? It, It took me, I had to build. It's like building a house, you know? You start with the very first stone, you know? So anyway, I think I would say that. All right. All right. That's the first one. Quest, your next question. Okay. <laughs> next question. Uh, okay. Got it. So, the influence of culture within society, would you say that? Um, hmm. The next. This is the main industry. Yeah. So you see the way how China, Japan, and South Korea have developed themselves and their culture. Would you say that they've done use that culture as an advantage to getting uh, the economic booster developed in a way that from how they were decades ago in the century timing or the Roman timing, they were still developed. And until now, they're like they're still developing the 10 times what they were before. And it's still developing in a way that it's, it's substantial. It's at a substantial rate. Would you say that it's the culture that they've used and they've implemented it so that the sociology, sociology or uh, philosophy aspects of it has improved in a way to help them grow? Or would you say it's mainly the culture, but they've done something that is a centralized, that's stuck there and the people are using that have been successful with it? Because I mean, we've seen America, they've grown. Yeah. Because of the, the four founders, Rockefellers, then you've got JP Morgan, yeah. then you've got the oil, then you've got the train industry. But the way the Chinese, the Japanese, or the Koreans have done it, it is completely different. But to make a difference, all the thought processes are different to them. The yeah. thought processes are different. That's another thing I was curious about. That's another yeah. thing that was a stuff, and I didn't have to explain, go get to the point of the influence of their culture. Because they have influenced, I'm not going to lie, and I'm, I'm surprised. It's, it's like, and coming now, and like, okay, this is new, but it's old. Is that 10 steps ahead of the future or the way they're doing things is just that is right. Interesting question. Um, I mean, it's a, it's such a super comp. Let me, let me start to, okay. So this is my mind. Okay. Yeah, sure. Go for so it. This will give you like a way to, so, so when you ask a question, that's, that it, that's a, this is a question that somebody would write a book on, right. Mm-hmm. Would write a three volume book on. Right. And so, uh, so what I have to do is I have to make the question the most simple. I have to come up with the most simple possible answer and then say, like, okay, now I'm going to explain explain it with the most simple possible answer. Hmm. Um, and once again, this is one of the ideas, because this is going back to your other question. Hmm. The, the one thing about the way I think about the world or I see myself or the, my response is that I'm a generalist. I'm someone who yeah. has a little bit of information about lots of things. But what that allows me to do is put things together in interesting yeah. ways. What I think they're interesting for me. I never imagine they're interesting for other people. Yeah. But it's but for me it's interesting. And so as long as I can keep myself keep yeah. 
as long as I cannot bore myself, then I'm like, awesome, you know? <laughs> okay, so here. So this was a bit of a tricky one, wasn't it? Because I was thinking, how am I supposed to say for and I still should not progress yeah. still. For other countries you go to, they're still not developing as that much as they are. It, it, it's like yeah. that. And and why now, right? Why now? So here, so here's the. Th- Have you ever seen this book um, by Jared Diamond, Guns, Germs, and Steel? Mm, I have, must have come across it, but I don't remember exactly. Yeah. Okay. Gu- so guns, germs, and steel, right? Now, mind you, it's it's this sweeping mm. in why humans meant together and I think there's something in it that has great value. So structures that emerge from human If we look at the United States, here was this this land, you know, the Americas, which mind you was populated by indigenous peoples who came over from China, but it, but the population wasn't very large. So the land it was just an a, an incredibly fertile land that generated that was able to generate just an immense amount of wealth and and then on top of that using slavery in the way that we did in through all of the americas meaning just slavery as a as a mode of production is for a small group of people at the right time is just incredibly profitable and so the united states was able to grow that just the u.s was able to grow in a way at that point in time it was unique in human history no nobody yeah that it's true what you're saying because i remember watching that when you must have seen the um, uh, the men who built america that documentary Uh uh-huh it was Uh that documentary when i was watching that documentary and saying that specific time i realized that that specific time when they were doing it they had the largest most biggest opportunity that they had available now it's a situation that you cannot go back to back how they were before. It's exactly. stuck like this now. And it, it's surprising that the room for growth is there, but it's not like how it used to be. And it's really interesting how they've done it in a way. And yeah. it's really it, like everything's balanced on time. Time is like the biggest key factor for some countries. Some are able to go forward and then there's someone that they can go backwards. It, yes. It's interesting. It is interesting how time is managed in a way. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and then the and then the United States was able to use its leverage, its mm-hmm. power, to dominate the countries in Latin America, in South America, yeah. in Central America, right? Which we did. So they were also producing for us, mm-hmm. and so we had the entire continent in a way to get to use to get rich, mm-hmm. um, which is just like that could never that w- the world isn't big enough that will never happen mm-hmm. again. But mm-hmm. now, so but if we go back. A thousand years, anybody would have predicted China was going to rule the world, right? Because China had the a, 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 a fleet of, of ships. Country. China had China had everything, but China took a different approach, and China got built borders and built walls, and and so they kept ideas out, and they kept the Chinese from going out and exploring around the world, right? The the Chinese kingdom, and so um, so I think that as i as i back out i think that the world is the 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 united states and europe have established systems that are that really deeply embedded in reproducing themselves Hmm. right so like you know like you it's like when you build a really tall building the, the, the stanchions in the ground are really deep. The stanchions, you know, like the the, the, the pillar, the posts underground are really mm-hmm. deep because the, the building can't move at all, right? So that means th- the building might be really high, but it's also really deep underground and it's really solid and mm-hmm. it's not going to move. And so this is like the United States and this is Europe, our social mm-hmm. systems, right? Mm-hmm. And... And it's and then therefore it makes it really difficult to to respond to changing events in a dynamic way. Mm. But in in Korea, in China in particular, Japan's a little different, but also Japan. You have these systems with very powerful states, like very powerful governments, mm-hmm. and 
they can move on a dime. Like they can change really quickly because they can, because right. you know, you have a top down um, power that right. allows people at the top to say, listen, this is where this entire country is going. We're going down this right. path and not this path or this path in the United States. We can't do that. Right. right. There's good and there's bad of that, but they can. And so the Chinese are able, for example, right, and we see this in the past 30 and 40 years, they've been able to make these shifts that nobody would have ever predicted they could make. And in the United States and in the UK, you could never make the changes that they made. Sure. And so, therefore, they can follow a path that nobody else can follow. It's not that they're right necessarily, right? And they're not necessarily going to get it right, but they probably are. And the future is going to be the future of China, it, because it, it, it's, it's true what I do. I really do agree with that because I remember when Huawei, uh, Huawei came out and they brought up 5G. All the media were like, "That was the hotline of the topic." Huawei yeah. is not 5G. Huawei is not 5G. And then you've got America saying that, "Okay, we've got 5G, but is it dangerous?" And they're like, "No, but you can use it, but no, we don't want it." And they're trying to implement their way of doing 5G, but they can't because they've already developed it. So now everyone's trying to copy, you know. In a way, it's it's like a political debate on one side. Yeah. Like the Chinese government are saying, no, we want to do something that's going to help progress forward in the future. And one side is saying, no, we want to do this. But at the same time, we want to be careful. We don't cause complications. But even though the complications are already there, we just thought it's, it's really interesting how they've done that. And I do agree. Yeah. It's like, the so limit, he, it's like they have limits. They have limits to what they can do, and then some can't don't have limits. It's interesting why. I think it's more in any political aspect. There's a lot of politics and bureaucratic. There's a lot of pol- there is a lot of politics into this. And times whatever whatever someone does with the country they develop. Yeah. So here okay, so here's a thought, right? China is living in a in an overpopulated country. Mm-hmm. Control it. Right. So in India is, you know, will surpass the Chinese population will start is going to start to decline. The Indian, the population in India will continue to grow. But in any case, so here's an advantage, right? It's not about how is 5G dangerous? Will people die? It doesn't matter if people die. The world is overpopulated. Like the, the, the truth is, right? And this is not this kind of liberal left kind of piece, right? The planet, planet Earth is overpopulated mm. at the, in terms of the way that we have arranged our economic system. We could, we, could easily, we could easily create a good life for everybody on Earth right now if we changed the ways in which we produce and consume. We'd have to radically across the entire globe. That is never going to happen. And mm. so therefore... The planet is overpopulated. It doesn't matter if 100,000 people or a million people or 10 million people die from 5G, right? From the uh, from all the consequences of 5G networks. I mean, really, it doesn't because we have far too many people in the world. The Chinese come through and say, look, this is where we're going. This is what we're going to do. And the and the Chinese government takes account for the in the United States or where you are in the UK. Like for example, we're building a dam, and we are going to displace two point two million people. We're moving them out of their communities. We're going to move them somewhere else, and that's what's happening. And there's no way around that. Right. And in the U.S., that would never happen in a million years. China, it's going to happen because this is what we're doing for our long-term growth. And so I think that that's an example of a government, (coughs) of a way of governing that Mm. will allow nation states to survive into the future. Really strong, very determined, and it doesn't matter what the masses say. It's, 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 um, I would say that the philosophy that they've they've implemented in the Chinese or the Chinese Japanese and the Korean, the way that they've implemented the philosophy and they centralized it in a way that they're mainly saying that the well-being of people is what we're going to be doing, make, taking care of the most. Because it, 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 it's, it's like, for example, years ago, China and China was not that well. It was poor. And in a situation that was not, economic-wise, it was not good. And then all of a sudden, now, when you go there and you see the videos, you see it's like clean, sustainable, it's environmental friendly. And it's surprising how they managed to do it. And they've got set rules and regulations for that as well, separately. 
but yeah, it's true with what you're saying. I do understand. It's true. Well, okay, okay, okay. So this is this is this East Asian philosophy, right? Mm. <clears throat> that the community is essential. The community it has dominance over the individual, mm. and so people. It's like this, it's such a subtle way. Like for you, um, have you have you spent a lot of time in India? No, I I have grew up. I never I've never been. Uh, I've been to Tanzania. I've been to Kenya. I've lived in UK most of my life. And so when when were you last in Kenya? When were you it last was, in Kenya? I was, okay, Kenya. I was. It was in February when I went to February, Tanzania, Kenya. Uh huh. Then I traveled okay. back to Africa just to for holidays. Travel back, and I was there. Okay, so you know that there's like a there's a cultural motif that sure. exists in the world, and there's a way of being in the world that we're it's shaped by our consciousness that mm. like our consciousness grows out of the culture around us mm. and the east asian consciousness is so embedded in community mm. it's community is so essential that like mm. we, all boats rise when the community like my boat will rise when all boats rise now that's not to say that there's not competition and all sorts of things, right? I mean that that's true, but the, but the community is essential. So like you you're 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 thinking about it, you're moving on it, and 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 power is at play. There are lots of power politics, lots of things are happening behind the scenes, but it's just essential that we see we step outside of our own consciousness into the consciousness of others around us, right? We don't do that in the West. It's not the sure. same. It's much more individual, and in a and a, mind you, it's individual also in in China and Japan and Korea, et cetera. Right? Individuals are trying to advance their own cause, but it's different, and so that allows the Chinese to make decisions and accept decisions hmm. for their country in a way that just never happens in the United States. We talk in the U.S. like people talk about us as being really patriotic. You know, and it's yeah. like, oh, the Americans are so patriotic. Yeah, yeah. Lots have. <laughs> yeah but it, it's like it's surface. It's like we're yeah, not really true. patriotic, man. Would you we say live that, in our own houses. Would you say that there's a chance that maybe in the future that maybe there'll be a change in America the way they the way they are, or they'll be able to implement similar to what China do, or would you think it'll be difficult to bring it in to the to Americans? I mean, do you think it's possible in a way? Or not possible or no, no i think the united i think that we in the united states are going to just watch our country just continue to spiral downward and we will i think we will end up in a really ugly civil war hmm. unless some i i think it's possible we can have, we can do some things so that that don't does not happen hmm. but i think the the end result where we're headed is toward a a really deep fracturing because po the political and economic mm. factions are so strong here mm. in the in wealth into the hands of smaller and smaller numbers of people i don't mean just wealth mm. like right. the entire look right now we're in the middle of the worst pandemic in 100 years and our stock market is just doing awesome it's yeah. like, how is that possible? We have like the the economy isn't is shit, you know. Unemployment is shit. Like things have fallen apart, mm -hmm. but the stock market is also you know, you know finances the the finance sector is 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 thriving. It's like you can't have an economic system like that. Mm -hmm. It's like kings and queens, you know? It's like you the kings and queens are in their castles, and it doesn't matter that there's a plague going on. It's irrelevant. It doesn't even impact them, except that eventually it does. And so that's what we're going to see in the United States. The stock markets are developing. I mean, it is surprising. It's, it's like right now, uh, Elon Musk, when he, did, when he with his Tesla and SpaceX, within the timeline period of the pandemic, he's, his wealth just went from here and just jumped up to 400 billion plus and you think how did you do that and it was not expected it, it's interesting how the markets are doing it so well in a way that it's developing in a way but it's at the same time like, how is it happening so some people are so strapped in the head scratching over what's going on you don't understand yeah yeah no it, it 
I look, I, and I'm not, obviously it's more, it's a, okay. So here's where me being a generalist is valuable, right? Because I understand I've studied the finance sector and stocks enough and you know what the market is and how it operates and in the degree to which it's about sociology as much as it is about finances, right? Um, meaning it's about what people believe to be true. Um, but now it, I think what's happening is that the market is increasingly less built on beliefs than it is built on the actual ability of this built on something else. And I don't know what the something else is, but you know, but the market stays, it, it, it goes because people believe it's fine and they continue to invest and they continue to do what they need to do. But something has shifted. Something radically has shifted that, that we could have an economy where so many people are out of work when there's so much unknown, mm. look at look at you look at you all. You're in a complete lockdown. Like oh, yeah, we're in the UK right now is a national lockdown, and there's there's people I can say for a fact that there's rich people are getting richer. Then you've got people that are not working their stock on disabilities. They're not getting any help. Dude, they're, they're, like there's a lot of mumbo jumbo going on. It's like dude, is, your is, entire economy, the stock market should be doing this right here, going straight down in the UK. You once mm-hmm. you call for a national lockdown, there's nothing happening, but it's not, and that is such a danger sign. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know what it is. So there are people who are far smarter than you and I, right? And who would who could talk about why that is should or should not happen. But like me as a sociologist who studies history, it's like, nah, there's something that's really troubling right now. Um, and so anyway, I think, I think the United States, I think we're headed toward uh, a, a, some kind of fracturing. And it doesn't help that, you know, so many Americans have guns and so many Americans are pissed and so many Americans feel like there's no hope. And so eventually we'll start killing each other, but you know. That's an interesting one. Oh, okay. Thanks for that. that that's an interesting one. Well, it, it's, it's it, an... it one of those debates. Talk, those are one of those talks that I don't think it's going to be endless. The thing is ever going to finish. It's going, to be like, it's going to be a topic for that every single time. Some people say that. Some people don't feel like that's, uh, that kind of America being controlled in a way that it's someone controlling from behind, but no one knows who it is exactly. Well, there's that one person maybe that's taking control of that area of the finance side that's making sure that the markets are going up yeah i don't think that it i don't i don't ever yeah. think that happens no. i don't think there's a small group of people that are controlling anything i never do i never think you need to have any kind of backroom conspiracy like that because you know that would the thing that would mean that uh yeah you don't need that I don't think it operates that way. I think that the the complex sociological factors and forces that are in play are would not never allow for a small group of people to hold on to to mm. make the kinds of decisions that they would need to make. All right, that makes sense. That makes All right, sense. What else? What else do you have? Okay, the next one is this. I'm just reading this to make sure I get it right. I hope myself. With the, would you say that, uh, okay, I wrote, I wrote this down. I don't know if this clicks with me, but I don't know if this, you would agree with me. Because the answer, the, the third one came into as we were talking in between, it just touched on the topic and it answered the thing. Would you say that people's intentions are key to developing cultures, which help to develop sociology or countries become successful? Would you say, would you, people's intentions are key to develop? people's intentions so the people's intentions that they, that they have so like if the chinese if there's that one person the, uh, the president saying that i believe that this is the philosophy or maybe someone set up a philosophy that they have the intentions and that helps them to grow forward to making a difference in culture would you say that's something to do so that, the idea so the question is is about the, the intentions. intentions that people have about yeah. what they what they're how they're acting and how they're thinking yeah their, in, their intentions versus the outcome of it 
the impact of it? Yeah, the impact of it. In the in the in the your question is what do I think about that? Yeah, that's the one. What do you think yeah. about? Do you think that is that's true? That's the way they go. That's true. From what your views are. Being yeah. So this is really interesting because I I am currently watching this the the series Game of Thrones. <laughs> Have you seen that? Yeah, it's addictive. Wait, okay. What's the new one? So, so I'm, I'm, well, as we say in the U.S., I don't know if you say it in, in the U.K., but I'm binge watching it, mm. right? Oh, enjoy so, it. It's fun. It, it is a good series. Yeah. So I actually started three years ago. I was, I was on a flight to India, mm. and I watched the, I watched season seven. So I started with season seven, mm. and then I went back to season one and started, mm. started over. Right. So now it's, it's so that's where I'm at now. Right. So I already know what happens in season seven, although I forget mm. most of it. But what, what's interesting about it is that I'm, so I'm, I'm seeing the world through the lens of game of Thrones to a mm. great, to a great deal. Mm. Um, and, and I'm thinking a lot about intentions and I'm thinking mm. a lot about, because you never know what anybody's in in that show it's it's nearly impossible to ascertain what people's true intentions are versus what they what they're scheming right or what they think their intentions are but they're not their actual intentions yeah. right they i think that like for example like i think what i want to do as a teacher is that I want to open the minds of students in the way that my mind was opened as a student when I was 20 years old, right? Mm. I think that's my intention, but I don't know if it's truly my intention, and 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 I don't know how I would ever know if that's my intention, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. Right? So, um, I, but I think that my, my gut feeling is that most people have no idea what drives them, what mm. motivates them. And, and I say this out of a, the sense of that, that my, my wife is, has walked me into the world of deep psychology. Mm. And, or we call it depth psychology, like Jungian psychology, right? Mm. So, we're, so it's this really fascination with the subconscious. Mm. And that our subconscious is really in many ways driving our, uh, each one of us, yeah. but the subconscious is structured by very similarly all around the world, right? There's a collective unconscious yeah. that's activated and which is why we see, you know, these mythological stories and so on that are the same all over the world in cultures that have never had contact with one another, right? The motifs and the stories yeah. and the way that the stories emerge, they, they're different. Like, you know, you have a dragon in Europe and, you know, you have your, um, you know, you know, if you think about all of the Indian gods, right, in Hind in Hinduism, mm. or you think about all the the way Muslims contextualize it, or whatever, it's all. But the story, the essential connection, is the same. Yeah. And so, what I think is that the unconscious is driving most of our desires, intrigue, interests. Most of our intentions is coming from the unconscious. It's not coming from our conscious thoughts. Mm. And most people, very few people ever take the time to take the journey into the unconscious mm. to really understand what it is that motivates them. And right. so, therefore, our intentions, we don't, we don't know what our intentions are. Mm. And the degree to which we do know, they're very simple. Mm. They're very simple. It's a very, yeah, it's very... Uh, it's a simplified understanding of ourselves. And you know, and if, if you don't, like, I have this idea that if you don't engage in a self, a conversation with yourself, with someone else who's highly trained hmm. to get you to understand the degree to which your conscious mind is making decisions versus your unconscious mind, which hmm. means you're connected to all these other unconscious forces in the universe. Hmm. If you don't take that journey, which is a very complex, long, difficult, treacherous journey, if you don't do that, you will never understand what motivates you. Okay. And very few people do. So. No, but it's, in, it's, it's really interesting. I was watching a documentary today on, uh, 
on people's philosophies and on in China, and they're saying that it's it's mainly the intentions. It's the way that that one person can make a difference on so many different aspects. That it just takes the, with what you were saying as well right now, like getting to that certain level. Once they're at that level, then they're able to go forward from there. Well, you know, but the issue is, so if we take the East versus the West, the intention emerges out of a different yeah, unconscious framework, right? But they still don't understand what it is. You know, the Chinese or the Japanese or the Koreans or whoever mm. still do not know what motive. They don't know what motivates them any more clearly than people in the West do. Mm. So it's just different. It's a it's a different system of subconscious or framework of subconscious forces. Yeah, yeah. I would say that. Yeah, I'd answer that. It's a really cool question, though. I mean, it it's a, one that it's one that I I live on as a teacher, right? Who teaches sure. in this area of really of it's you know the word that I would use for my work what I do in a classroom is, is it's treacherous, right? I'm walking on a razor's edge, especially in these times when people can so easily have their careers destroyed by just saying the wrong thing. Yeah. You know, just slight, just slightly. Yeah. Just saying the wrong thing. And then it's, Mm -hmm. then it grows. It's like a virus. It grows really, really fast. And then suddenly the career is over. Right. And so I live, with the idea that my, m- it's largely my intention that is your your just your own intention. Yeah, like sure. why why do you do the things you do? I do the things because I feel that there's more development in it with the topics. Mm. That's that's the biggest thing I would say. Because me right now sitting down reading lots of stuff, I just want to try to understand, develop, and just keep developing as much as I can, just to try that little spark. So I can be able to have the little spark as well. Because it's like from your videos and your your lectures and the seminars you've done, it's like you find your spark in sociology and you know yeah. that this is what's driving me forward. And it's it's been there either it was something years ago, either it was a timeline period, or it was like a little small moment that you just had. It's just- yeah. I think for me, okay, so here's the thing that <clears throat> That's I also live- answer, to be honest. That's the best way I could say it. No, just that's cool. To understand more, to be honest, and just see that little, find that little spark if I can find it as well. I'll be in luck to get it. Well, you will find it after the fact, right? You'll only find it by looking back, and you may find huh. it. You may look back and realize, oh, that you you found your calling during the pandemic, right? That actually your huh. What, what, when during the pandemic, when you were reading a lot of books because you wanted to have a better understanding of the world, you might look back and say, yeah. wow, that's like what got me. That's what opened a door for me to be, I don't know, like a college professor or something, right? Yeah. And that I didn't even realize it. But that's when, you know, f- f- for me, Azad, that's when the world opened up for me, right? But you won't know that for maybe 10 years or 15 years or something. That's what makes this so fascinating also um, that we don't, that we never know. It's always, it's always when you look backwards, it's always when you look back. It's not whenever we're forward, whenever you get to a certain age and you look back and like, oh, it was right in front of me. I just need to to get to that point. It's always the other way around. It's interesting. It is interesting. Yeah, it was always in front of me. Yeah, I hear that. When did you, so when would you say is that when you were doing sociology that you said that this is the topic or this is the kind of area that I will have that little spark in? When did you know that? So when you were doing the modules that you're teaching all the topics, you, you're, you're, you're doing, so you, you're teaching sociologists and that's the area you find interesting. There's others as well, but this one specifically, would you say that this was when, when, when was that timeline period that you said that, okay, this is my spark here. That's yeah. Forward. Yeah, so, okay, so here. Um, Hope that makes sense. Hope that makes sense. Yeah. I think that for me, I I always, huh. I think I always, I, 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 always, I found myself 
moving around always to different topics, different subject matters. And I, and I was not able to just hold on to one specific thing because I kept, remember, like I, I would go into a library and I would just pick, a, pick some book out about some random topic and start reading it and find it really fascinating. And I still do, right? I'm just, I could read anything about, you know, molecular biology. I pick something up and I start reading it and I say, hmm. holy shit, like this is how cells operate, right? Like this is how they mutate. And like, and then I start reading a little more and a little more. And then before I know it, I've been reading for four hours about the mutation of cells. Yeah. And then I stop and I say, okay, that's in my mind, right? And But I can't not do that or how like a yeah. camera lens works. You, you know what I mean? Just stuff yeah, like no, that. Well. Okay. Yeah. And so therefore, I I think I that's what keeps me as a generalist that I just, mm. that's why I teach the class that I do. Like every semester it's different. I never do the same class twice. And it it's always a little bit, even those that are similar that I kind of redo, they're still different enough that it keeps it interesting. So I think, yeah, I think that's, it's just my own part of it is I think for me, because I'm um, like, Nah, I don't, I'm just too curious. I'm I'm just curious about life. How would you How would you say you control it? Because I've got the same I've got the same situation. Because with the module, the the best the the qualifications I've done, and at times when my mom's talking to me, like you need to stop changing topics, stick to one thing, and I can't. Because if I stick to one thing, I'll get bored of it. I need to find something else to do. If I don't, then I'm stuck. But how yeah, do you, so, you manage that to your advantage? Yeah, or, that's really interesting. Uh, they, so, they, like whenever you're curious, it cannot stop. It's just difficult. It's yeah. hard to control it. Okay, so here's how I control that. There are certain subject matters. First off, I think it's it's I think some of the the best the best thinkers in the world are always generalists, right? Mm -hmm. Or they're people who have multiple interests. You mm -hmm. know, I was talking to somebody last night about this, about people who are great athlete who are great thinkers who are also great athletes, who are also talented in some musical instrument or something, right? These people that can do multiple things, right? And and I think in a certain sense that they're a generalist and they're often in a generalist when they're thinking, right? So like, I, you know, I, th I know some people who I think are just very talented thinkers. And then I come to find out they have another area of expertise or multiple areas of expertise, right? That are, that I never would have even known about. And then I'd come to find out that they're very much generalists. So I keep that. That's always in my mind that it's really good to be a generalist. Okay. So that's the first thing. But what happens is sometimes when, when I learn just enough to start talking about some subject matter and, mm -hmm. but there's an expert out there yeah. who, challenges me on something and then i realize oh shit i i spoke too far like i went too far like i should never have s gone into this territory of whatever it is right because clearly i don't know and so then i decide well i have to talk about that issue so i need to go learn more about it mm -hmm. and so what keeps me i stay in in I maintain my generalist approach, okay? Mm -hmm. But I focus on certain subject matters more than others because those are the ones that are highly contentious or highly political. Does. does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. It does make sense. It does. Yeah, like if I talk if I start talking about some issue that l lots of people talk about that's really complex and it's it's mm -hmm. like I'm going to make a fool of myself. So I, I got to know, at least learn what things not to say, at least learn what I don't know. Hmm. Okay. And if I can learn what I don't know, then I'm, then I'm okay. Then I know never to walk into that territory. That makes sense. Yeah. That, that's, that's, it. that's basically the question. So how about you? But so, but it sounds like you're very much a, so you're saying you were a generalist also. Well, like you like lots of things. The thing is with me, it's, it's, I tend to change a lot. So when I was doing my, I remember the first time when my mom said in, when we were in Korea, that what, what do you want to do? And I'm thinking engineering. I'm like, okay, I don't know what an engineering is. My dad was an engineer. So I go do the course. I do it. I get through the three years of the diploma course in college. 
And I'm thinking like, okay, what the hell am I doing here? It's not, it's not fun. But I'll still finish it. And in between that, I did it again and I changed it to I said, you know what, I'm going to do computer games tonight. I said, because I was interested in graphic designs. Then again, I was like, okay, that's not going anywhere. Then again, I changed it to architecture. And I was like, okay, more, 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 more. Like, we need to stop changing that stuff there. But the problem was, it just too curious to see how it was. But the one yeah. thing I will say is, looking backwards, it was worth it. Yeah. Throughout the whole time. There was a bit of a time where they were going from point one, point B, then D, then E, then F. But when I'm connecting it, I'm like, kind of makes sense now because I've got a taste of what each thing and it's it's led me to where I'm today if I wasn't doing the if I was not curious I would not make the chances or the risk to do this or this or do this like what I'm doing right now with you it's just being curious this could quite the what I'm doing right now was many years ago and I had a question ready but I just don't know who to ask and I just said let me keep it one side and I'll come back to it and then luckily on time as well good I'll find someone I can ask so just being curious as well, to be honest. I just yeah. like staying curious and having that spark there. Because I feel that if you don't be curious, then you're going to lose the spark and then you're not going to be able to push yourself. You're going to be stuck in a little time period of what to do or how to go forward. But being yeah. curious is kind of letting you go forward, but it's, it's opening new doors as well as you go along. It's, it's yeah. an interesting one. It's, it's something that it's difficult to say. But with me being curious, I would say just just love to know as much as I can. Just being curious to be honest. Even if I don't know something, I'll still be willing to challenge it. Even if I don't know something, I'll still be willing to read on it, challenge it, and then go yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best way I would say. So like, like, okay, so if you take something like Brexit, hmm. are you familiar with both sides of the argument? Why, why I, Brexit's good, why it's bad? Like, I, I you... am to an extent, in a way, um, one side is that they wanted to be an independent country and they wanted to have their own rights and their own rules and regulations. And then on one side is that people, it wasn't, I'm not going to say much, but it was a bit of two-sided debates. One side in UK, one side wants that they want to be independent and they want to have their own rules that they don't have to follow with the EU. And e, some people say that if we're with EU, then you take too much money from us and we don't. So it was a bit of a clash. But it's whenever I get asked those questions, I'm always in the middle on which to pick. Do I pick Brexit or do I pick stay? Because it's yeah. like an advantage, but then there's a disadvantage. But it's yeah. hard to say at the same time. Because yeah. I never managed to get the right answer. Do I with or without? It's like I'm never really, I'm, I'm always 50 50 in the middle. You know, yeah, that's good. I, I mean, because the person who is able to think about, um, multiple issues hmm. who think about lots of issues you it's it's almost impossible to come up with a solid answer yeah. to any question right it because you can't have, you can't <laughs> it's really difficult it's just yeah. Yeah. like, like my, one of my when we were in PR my PR course my friend was saying what's your view on Trump yeah. on one aspect I'm thinking okay he's a bit of an idiot but on the other aspect I'm thinking okay he's a business guy minded and he's talented and I've got to give him that respect but at the same time, he's not doing, I don't like what he's doing with the immigration process or the bill yeah. or the way he's doing it. But what I've understood is this much that he's mainly focused on developing his businesses in a way. Yeah, he's more yeah, of a yeah. business person than a politician. But somehow yeah. he makes it sound he's a politician, but he's not really. So it's like two-sided debates. Yeah, like you'll yeah, say exactly. one thing and then someone won't understand and say, so what's your view? Like, I don't know. I don't know what's good. Is it right or wrong? I don't know. It's hard to say. But yeah, it's not yeah. something that is not doing right, which I don't agree with at all. And then there's some things that is doing business-wise. I'm like, okay, he's developing the country in a way, but oh, it's still not going right. Yeah. So one thing is that, yeah, I'm with you on that. Like, you, you, and and so for me, what I tell people on this issue, like with Trump, mm. um, I mean, I'm happy to see him go. My God, I just, mm. it's, it's just. He's still trying his best with the two weeks left. He's still trying it. I don't know why that's... I've been laughing with that for the last two weeks. It's like, he's yeah. trying his best to get the vote. He's lost it. He's caught, but he's still lost Oh, my it. God. I would like to see this guy thrown in prison, actually. But I, at the same time, I've always known that I have to be able to make an argument for why he's a good thing at this hmm. point in history. 
mm. in the United States and yeah. around the world. Like, and how most, and why is he good? My teacher, uh, Manuel Hernandez, or also, he says, in one aspect, if you think about it, he is basically giving the media an advantage to their side because he's like the head focus and he's like doing some, he's developing in a way that all the media sector, all the media are focused on him, all the spotlights are on him. If they don't have anything new to talk about, then it's going to be a bit of a question to how we're supposed to go about it. But they've got like, oh, we've got Trump. We're going to go for him. Then yeah, you've got exactly. UK. Then it was like they've got the certain places that they know what to yeah. go for. It's, yeah. a bit of a, it's a bit of an interesting one. It's, it's You can never get to a conclusion. Whenever someone says, what's with Trump? I'm always in the middle. No, good. Yeah. I'm always in, that, in the middle. When I say I'm it, in the middle, then I hire yeah. you. Know, you need to yeah. say, I can't. I'm in the middle of stuff. Like with Brexit as well, it's the same situation. It's, yeah. unique. I, it's difficult to get to the point. So, so mostly, I I would say I was uh, against Brexit. Hmm. Oh, first off, I saw both sides. I saw like, yeah, I could make an argument for Brexit. I could make an argument against Brexit. Right. I was actually in Brussels when the vote came in. I was wow. with a. We were at a. We had a, a project meeting at NATO headquarters. Hmm. And so when when that vote came in, we went down to the EU Parliament. It was like a ghost town. It was really amazing to see to watch that happen. Hmm. I was with a, a colleague of mine from we were we, Lori and I were there. We were with a colleague from Northern Ireland, hmm. and uh, yeah, it was. But I will say that there's a part of me which I I talk I can say because I know that it's just whimsy, right? It's just silly. But there's but I was mostly against Brexit because I want to see Boris Johnson go down. Like right. I'm just like you, son of a bitch, man. Like he didn't, like he didn't believe in that even, and he his team, like they didn't, right. like they're they're just like we're gonna go after this, but we're doing it not out of the good of the country. We're clearly right. doing it out of our own personal motivations, and I'm like you don't. And you, you're getting these people to follow you. This is like Trump, you know. It's like this egomaniacal thing. That like Trump, you don't. He doesn't give a damn about the United States. He, no, he does doesn't. not care at all he about spent, the U.S. When he was spending 1.2 billion on the wall, I was thinking, okay, that's not really. You should be doing that for the first day on the office. And no. he's basically wasted 1.2 billion just on the wall. Yeah, it does. It, no, it just he, doesn't make any sense at times. No, he is the least patriotic president the United States has ever yeah, had. That's what it is. Yeah, it's it's disgusting, actually. Well, that's how I largely saw Boris Johnson, right? So mm-hmm. for me, in the end, I wanted Brexit to go down just because of, of him. But mm-hmm. I understand that that's not very intellectual. Mm-hmm. But that's where I I came in. So in any case, it's good to you can make arguments on multiple sides, you know, because this is really, really essential opinion on something, which is why for me, like a teaching a class, like so often it's easy for me to not take sides because I, I don't actually have sides. I don't have opinions. Yeah. And sometimes I, I'll, I'll put something out there and students will think it's an opinion. And I'm like, no, I, I just have to make a point about something, but I don't even know what I think, right? Like there's a part of me thinks that complete segregation, I could make the argument that a complete segregation of cultures and races and so on is actually a good thing. Right. Like it's fine. It would be good for the world moving forward, right? And then there's a part of me that says, of course, nah, the world, hist- that's behind us. History is moving toward complete assimilation and integration. And so that's where we will be. And so I could make that argument much better, I think. But yeah, so good for you that you can do that because that's, I think, the sign of a of a really thoughtful person. Right. Yeah. And who yeah. knows, maybe in, in, you know, down the road you'll end up turning a corner and you'll be a, you know go back to school and get your doctorate degree and be a professor somewhere because you can't stop your mind yeah you know? that's another thing maybe I don't know let's see we could I don't know, what happens wait so you're but, married right yeah I am I am married do you, and do you have children no no I just got married recently <laughs> oh right okay just recently yeah oh it's it's just so recently my partner's doing medicines so she wants to become a doctor Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So she's doing medicines, and she wants to go into that pathway. And then me, I'm stuck here thinking, okay, where am I going to go? So I'm Dude, so do that. So you, you, she'll be a doctor, and you'll be a, you can go be a doctor, a professor. Yeah, that's <laughs> a, 
No, because it really is. It's not about having the mind for it, right? Like, like you have the mind for it. Sure. Um, it's just about having the years that you say, okay, listen, I'm going to dedicate this many years of my life toward that. But sure. it's not. But it's what you do anyway, right? You know, for me, my years of study were the were. It, nothing changed between my years of study and my what I do now. Nothing has changed. I I live my life in the exact same way. And so it's me just exploring ideas every single day. Sure. Yeah. It's, it's interesting because I was watching one of your, your videos on when you're saying your TED Talks is the one way it gives you the platform. It's interesting how sometimes that one little moment can give you a little push and it just gets you to the place that you need to get and you don't even expect it sometimes. Yeah, yeah, you it's don't. It's really interesting. Yeah, you don't. You never expect. We never, just like death will come to most yeah, of us. We don't know when it, it's going to happen. We don't yeah, know just, when we don't know. So that's the little thing. Yeah, that's what makes it. It's also very humbling, right? That. Hmm. Um. Yeah, it's very. Uh, it's it's very. I'm not, like I'm just having one of those moments when. 10 thoughts entered my head all at the same time. I thought, shit, you know, this is, and I have 35 years on you, right? Like, you, you know, you're young. So I have 35 years of thoughts entering my mind. So when 10 of them enter in at the same time, it's like, it's really, yeah, it's really big. God. What well, would you, what would be your one advice? To say for, I've asked all my questions. Basically. That was all the questions I was to ask. I've asked them. There's some of there's some, I've asked the questions. Those are the questions I wanted to ask. I'll come back to them if I have more. There will be more. I know that for sure. So, yeah. the, what would you say from your experience as you were growing up and going through the uh, process of your education and getting to where you are today? What's the one advice you would give to anyone? That is, what's the one advice you would give to someone about life or maybe how to go forward in life? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Then the most important one is, so, you know, if you win the, the, you know, the, the lottery, right. And you win, you know, you win 20 million pounds, right. The result of that will be positive and negative, right. If you lose everything, the result will be positive and negative. So it doesn't matter what happens. It's positive and negative, right. Um, that's the most important thing, always. It's really, really key. And because when we do that, our own minds begin to get smaller. Mm. And we don't know how th- the thoughts that we're building in our lives are building. We're like we're building a structure of a way of thinking. And the structure of a way of thinking takes many, many years to put together, right? The foundation. And, and it's everyone is, if we do it our own way, it's uniquely ours. And so therefore, it is impossible to compare what we're building, the structure of our consciousness, of our thoughts, right? Thought system. It's yeah. impossible to compare what we do with what other people do. It's just impossible. And so, therefore, you're your own unique thinker. And right. it's important for you to be your own unique thinker. And that's it. There's nothing more. And so, just, just follow your own intellectual curiosity wherever it takes you. Right. And, and that's it. Because you get to my age... And you look back and you think, wow, man, that you, I could never, I could never compare myself to anybody else, right? It doesn't matter. So, yeah, that's, I would say that. Those are two things. Yeah. All right. Thanks for that. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. You're welcome, man. It's good talking. Thanks. Hey, wait, hang on a second. I want to see yeah. if there's a there was a question in the. Oh. Um, <laughs> nice um, painting, by the way, behind you. Wow, there was like a how many people? Wow, so you guys, so the BBC just announced that you just had, I think, yesterday 
over 1,040 deaths of people with coronavirus. It's the highest number since testing started. Like, man, you guys are really in deep shit, right? It's bad. It's looking bad right now. The way the situation right now is, is with the new variant, it's, it's, it's not looking good. At the moment, as soon as Scotland said that we're going to close the borders of the country, that's when the Prime Minister said, okay, we need to do the same thing. So they didn't like, close. Scotland didn't close up just because of Trump, right? No. Because Trump uh, wanted to come over. Yeah, it's still got both <laughs> posts. I'm surprised it's got a project being built in Scotland. I'm so surprised about that. Too now. It's still yeah. got it there. But yeah, it is bad. It's, it's bad right now, especially with job wise. It's, it's not looking good. It's yeah. not looking good with jobs right now. It, it's really, it's really fascinating. Slowly in the future. Yeah. Of Hopefully. Well, it's fascinating. You know, like this has changed the world. We it will has. never go backwards. It has. This is never, yeah. this is going to be a memory to keep. It's going to be a big memory to keep. And, and, you know, in climate collapse, what's, what's coming at us is also changing the world. And so, you know, we're living in a really fascinating time. Mm. Um, and I should add that, you know, it's kind of like you, you, you know, like slim and none, right? Mm. And the people who are able to change the world, like this, the young Greta woman that you know the young girl yeah. who do with her it's fate it's the it's the great right. cosmic consciousness right yeah that's another thing as well yeah so you so you, what's important is for you somebody like yourself to just understand the world don't worry about doing anything in it just understand it you know right. and and then that will be that's enough that's right. a ma- that's a monumental task in and of itself so yeah Damn, man. All right, so listen. Um, yeah. yeah, if I c- come across a, a cool book, but I would recommend, though, for you that, that book, Guns. It's Here, I'm going to put it Can in the Can you send a link? Would you send it on your email? Yeah. That was an interesting conversation. I'm not going to lie. I enjoyed it. It was worth the talk. It was worth it. I was, I was a bit, I was thinking, should I do this? Should I not? Should I wait? No, no, I just take the risk. Let's go no, no, it. it's good. No, thanks for thanks for jumping on. I really enjoy it. It gives me an opportunity to think about things, you know. Because when I'm teaching my class, for example, mm-hmm. I don't get an opportunity to really push my mind because mm-hmm. you can't. You, you know, in this coming semester, we have a thousand students in class, wow. right? There are a thousand people who are, they, you know, they're twenty years old, right? They, there's a there may be fifty of them who are really their minds are really going about these kinds of mm-hmm. issues. And then you got 300 of them who just want to be anywhere other than where they are, right? So then it's that, so I have to speak to that group in the mm-hmm. middle, and uh, which is fine, right? Because once again, I have to take complex ideas and I have to put mm-hmm. them. And sure. uh, it is true. Hey, so I put, hang on, I put so I put it in. I can put it in. I'll put it in the chat here. Hang on, okay. I'll put it in the chat in Zoom so you can see it. I put it in, in Twitch. Um, yeah, um, that's it. It's in the chat on Zoom. You can see it, right? Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. It's just a cool yeah, book, man. That's one of that's one of those books that when I read it, my whole mind went, "Oh, okay." And I had been studying this my entire college in America and secondarily on Africa, hmm. and B, right? But but this is kind of. But you might have to pay for those. All right, I'll very good. Touch. And Work wash it. your hands. Wash your hands, my friend. Yeah, that's another thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All right, we'll talk to you. Thank you. Ciao. All right, man, that's it. We are, uh, anyway, I, that was awesome. That was a really awesome conversation with Assad from.